Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel to another fan TV, man. Back at another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos. And let's get into Ravens training camp day eight. All right, so we'll be up front and honest with it. Today was a light day. Uh, that's why the title is like they focus on the fundamentals today. Um, installation, you know, just getting all the plays down, stuff like that. So there's not too much report about what happened on the field because it was kind of just individual work and team drills. But we'll talk about what did happen, right? Um, so Geno Stone... Uh, did not practice. Trenton, Trenton Simpson did not practice. Rocky Seen did not practice. Got your regular pup list guys, Ricard, Dobbins, Bateman, and then Bowles on the NFI list. All right. Um, David Ojabo, who was previously injured, actually came back to practice today. Uh, they said he kept it pretty light. He didn't really participate in really any of the drills, but just more so, I guess, dressed and got a little slight workout in. And, uh, yeah, that was it for David Ojabo. So, I will say this. The positive is that David Ojabo is out there uh, around his teammates, that he's comfortable enough or that he's not in uh, such severe discomfort that he can't be out there just to watch practice, right? I think that's a very good detail. I think that's a big detail, right? Um, the Ravens are still waiting to hear back on what's happening with Rocky Scene. John Harbaugh said yesterday he doesn't expect it to be a serious injury or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, the fact that we haven't heard anything yet, I'm not going to say it's concerning, but, you know, you would like to hear something relatively quickly about something that wasn't supposed to be serious, right? Uh, so hopefully he's all right. If not, the Ravens have some serious answers, uh, some serious questions, I should say, a cornerback um, that are probably already there, but even more so if Rocket seems to go down for any uh, significant amount of time. But hopefully he's okay and we keep it pushing, all right? Um, like I said, installation day. So Ravens is just doing some light stuff, not, nothing really crazy. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting is that now, at that starting left guard spot that we've been talking about is an open competition, probably the main competition on offense. Um, and then like the main competition on defense is obviously seems to be that slot cornerback spot. So on offense, uh, that left guard spot, and we know the rookie Sala was holding it down, getting that first team reps. Now it seems like they're giving it to John Simpson. So they're trying to be fair and going back and forth about who's going to get that those reps with the first team. Uh, then they said now John Simpson might get like a two-week period or whatever to um, show what he can do with the first team after Salah had his two weeks, right? Now, after this is over, does that mean Ben Cleveland gets in the mix with the first team? I don't know. It seems like Ben Cleveland seems to be, I don't know, I won't say far behind because I don't know how, how close the competition is or isn't. So I won't, I'm not going to lie and say he's far behind, but... Uh, it seems to be that he's at least in third place because if they gave it to Salah, then they gave it to John Simpson, then, you know, if Ben Cleveland was second, they would give him the opportunity right now. You know what I mean? And it has to happen like that. All right. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Obviously, preseason games are a big opportunity to impress. And speaking of preseason, right, I think the Jets and the um, I think it's the Jets and the Browns play tonight in the Hall of Fame game. So that's pretty interesting. I'm definitely going to be watching that. So football is definitely back. I'm, I'm excited for that. Um but I did want to talk about something that Ty Munkin said in his. So two more things, well, really three more things. But Ty Munkin said that he's been in constant communication with J.K. Dobbins. Uh, they said they've been talking on a daily basis. Um, that he went, obviously, you know, everybody wants J.K. Dobbins out there. He's not out there right now. Um, it's pretty much something that we were talking about on a daily basis. What is J.K. Dobbins doing, whatever. Um, in my opinion, I'll give my opinion on J.K. Dobbins right here. I think that he knows that this is the year for him to make his money in the league, right? Obviously, running back, the running back market is what it is right now. So I don't think he's saying I'm sitting out because I'm trying to get paid right now. I think he's sitting out because he knows that um, if he was to get injured in training camp, if he was to get injured during the preseason, that the value or the chance that he has to making that big money on his next contract is, is pretty much shot. It's done for. So what he's doing is he's sitting out of these practices and, you know, to give himself a 100% chance of being ready and playing the regular season games, right? Now, is it the most comfortable thing for Ravens fans and the staff and everything, everybody to go through? Probably not. But listen, when your money is on the line, you got to do what you got to do. So um, I understand J.K. Dobbins' situation, right? If that's truly what's going on, that's how I believe it's, that, that's how what I believe it to be. Um, but for me, if, you would, if they would just come out and say that, I would really have no issue with it. I mean, some fans probably would. They want to see everybody out there. If you're healthy, you should practice. And I, I do get that to a certain extent. Um, but I don't know. I feel like running backs is very different, right? You know, they're already being marginalized of the league in, in some ways. So they feel like they have to be extra careful with their body. And um, J.K. Dobbins had one injury that took him out for really a year and a half. He missed that whole season. And then last season, he missed half of that year trying to get right from that injury. So I understand why he's cautious, right? 
So hopefully we get J.K. Dobbins out there soon, but I wouldn't expect it to be anything, maybe second preseason game, or that, that kind of week the way he'll come back to practice, maybe something like that. Or maybe he'll just come back week one, uh, week one of the regular season. We'll see. Um, Peter King, right? So Peter King talked to Lamar Jackson um, at the Ravens training camp. I saw the video on YouTube this morning. And the only reason I'm bringing it up is because the questions were just, like the question he asked about Lamar Jackson and his injury was just so weird to me, right? He asked Lamar Jackson, right, do you think your injuries are, the injuries you had was fluky, or do you believe that, you know, you have an injury, you have an injury problem, right? He brought up the fact that Lamar Jackson in the last two seasons has missed, I think he said, 34% of the offensive snaps uh, through injury, right? And I get what he's trying to ask, right? You know, do you think that you're past your injuries, right? I don't know, but like, why ask an athlete that kind of question? What is an athlete going to say? Yeah, you know, my body's breaking down. I'm just constantly injured. That's the truth. I like, know Lamar Jackson, and Lamar doesn't handle the, per- the question perfectly. You know, he said, no, I'm past that. I'll call the injuries fluky, this and that, because, you know, he doesn't really give into that activity like that. But the media and the reporting sometimes, I think, I think Peter King works for Pro Football Talk, and, you know, him and Florio, the kind of questions that these guys ask sometimes really borderline on disrespectful. Um, and, you know, Lamar's not going to he's not gonna bite into that. But to me, it's just like you have a chance to talk to Lamar Jackson. I mean, I know you talk to all athletes around the league, right, whatever. But you got a chance to talk to a quarterback, NFL quarterback, and then you ask him that question. Like, it's just, to me, it was silly. It was it was needless. It was pointless. Uh, but what else is Lamar Jackson going to say other than, yes, I'm past the injuries and I believe it was fluke? What else is he going to say? You know, what's the point of even asking that question? They add nothing to the interview. But, um, but yeah, also what Peter King said that the most impressive rookie he's seen so far is Zay Flowers. Um, he said that Zay Flowers' ability to get open is, is the real deal and that, um, you know, he's really impressed with Zay Flowers. So I will take the good and the bad with uh, Peter King on that note, right? Um, so real quick, wrapping up this video, uh, I know nothing really happened today. So, um, but we're going to talk about so far what I like and dislike. I'm just going to do, I'm going to do one thing on offense. I'm going to do one thing on defense. Then we're going to wrap it up, all right? All right, so one thing on offense that I like, that I'm really liking the hearing, that I'm seeing, um, is wide receiver wide receiver play, right? Uh, Ravens, have had, Ravens have had a long history of not great wide receiver play. We know this. Um, we've always had to depend on uh, the veterans to come in and, co- and save the wide receiver core. Um, then you had the Greg Roman era where we just didn't have receivers at all, except for you had, you had one guy who was designated to go off in his, in his system, and that was it. Um, but this this is very different, right? OBJ, Odell, or sorry, I said OBJ, and Odell. OBJ, Zay, um, Nelson Avalor. Um, you know, you have receivers here who are making plays for their quarterback. And um, I talked about yesterday with um, OBJ going up on Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey gets his hand on the ball, and OBJ still catches the ball in midair. Like, he made Lamar Jackson right on that play. It might not have been the greatest throw or whatever, great play by Marlon Humphrey. Odell still managed to, wait, managed to find a way to come down with that football. And that's important. A, a receiver that can make your quarterback right all the time. Because Lamar Jackson, as great as he is, no quarterback makes the right, the right decision 100% of the time. I mean, if that was the case, they'd be a robot. You know what I mean? So be, no quarterback does that. But in the times where a receiver can go up and make your QB right, that's invaluable to the team. So I really like what I'm hearing from the wide receivers. Um, I like that. Quite honestly, I, I've been wrong about Nelson Aguilar so far. So far, you know, he's he's been – Really good. He's been a he's been one of the best receivers there, and I hope that continues. All right, honestly. And then uh, one thing on defense. To me, defense. This is the biggest surprise right here is that the defensive line has been so good and so dominant throughout the first week and a half of training camp. Um, it's a pleasant surprise. I'm not going to say like uh, I'm disappointed in the offensive line. I know some people will take that angle with it that the Ravens offensive line is uh, is poor. They're getting beat, and that's one way you could definitely look at it. Right. Um, the left guard, left guard position is unsolved, but I still trust those four other guys on the line to get it right versus other teams, right? To me, I'm going to say, I'm going to take the other route and say that the Ravens' defensive line is is playing up, right? Um, I thought that the Ravens may need to go out and sign somebody um, in free agency, and that hasn't been the case so far. Justin Houston is still out there. They want to bring him back if he wants to come back. You know, he earned himself, I would I would, I would imagine, he earned himself some money last year with, with his play. Um, if he decides to go somewhere and play this year. Um, but the guys that they have here playing well. You know, we talked about Ojabo, uh, Matabike, Michael Pierce getting after the passer, which is great. 
you know, so even even though that's always has made plays here and there. So I'm really happy with what I'm seeing or what I'm hearing about the Ravens' defensive line because that, to me, was even a bigger question mark than who was the Ravens' third cornerback going to be was how would the Ravens affect the passer? And um, the pass rush has been really good so far. Hopefully that continues and we see that on to the regular season, man. So um, that's going to be today's video. I know uh, it's not the typical report about, oh, this happened, this and that. But, you know, I figured I'd sit down and share some of my thoughts about what's going on around and surrounding the Ravens all together. So uh, if you stay to this point in the video, man, consider hitting the subscribe button. And we'll be back tomorrow. And uh, it's Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.